are counting down to the start of the football season. We're also breaking down the 2013 Utes. They will miss guys like Starlo Tulele, Reggie Dunn, and others. But Mike Grant and Robert Jackson explain that there's a new group of players ready to step up in their place. There are always players that move on, but not every player is a star. And off Silas Red, he's going to be dropped by Starlo Tulele back at the 25-yard line. Or a Wolfman. Right, he's got a lane. He spells it so touchdown Utes. Star Lotulale isn't the only player that went to the NFL. Three of four starters from 2012 moved on to play Sundays. With 75% of the D-line gone, who do the Utes have? Nate Orchard will start at left end, and it's plays like this. They take it away. Nate Bakafua stripped it, and he scores. He walks into the end zone for a touchdown. It's that are the reason he is here. He just needs more of them. Trevor Riley will be at right end, and the question for him is if he can come back from an ACL tear, but him being back in a pass rushing role. Here comes Utah, they're gonna pass it, and the ball knocked out at the line of scrimmage. Trevor Riley got it. We'll put him back in his natural position. On the inside, it is all about who will step up at D tackle. Tenny Palapoy got plenty of playing time behind Star, but is he ready to start? LT Tui Pelotu, Stevie Tui Kolavatu, and Seni Faunuku will also be in the mix. No doubt about it, it will have to be a team effort. Offensively, how do you replace 2,560 yards? In back, they'll hand it off again. White's gonna bounce this one to the outside. 45, 40, 35, 30, still on his feet. Bye-bye, there he goes, 10-5. Touchdown for the Wolfman. The latest in great Utah running backs, John White IV, nearly accounted for a third of the Utes' total offense the last two seasons. The Utes have four horses in the stable ready to take the baton. Then using that bruising downhill style of running. Kelvin York, when healthy, is an every down back. He is a powerful downhill runner that refuses to go down on first contact. After York, Bubba Poole, Lucky Radley, and Carl the Truth Williams all made their cases this spring to get reps, but they cannot rest easily because Texas prep star Dravian Young and three other recruits will be on the hill this fall. The Utah offense wasn't good enough last season. That's why Kyle Whittingham hired Dennis Erickson as co-offensive coordinator. If you listen to the pundits, it won't matter. People are down on Utah next season. Erickson joined the Ute cast this week, and he's well aware of the low expectations next season. Coach, I know in your career you've moved around a little bit, uh, college and NFL. Do you feel pretty settled in here at Utah now after after spring? I think moving around is maybe an overstatement a little bit with me. But <laughs> I really like it. I like what I'm doing. I like my role. Um, you know, I've been there. I've done that. I've done about everything in football. And, and I'm just enjoying it, being around the players, being around the staff. Uh, you know, hopefully I can contribute to take this program where we need to take it. And, and, it's been really enjoyable for me, and, and uh, uh, again, I can't wait till this fall and, and, and see where we're at. I, I believe we're going to surprise people. I, I really think we can do some things offensively, and, and we got some weapons to do it with. So I'm settled in, and, and it's uh, I'm really looking forward to the fall. And, and uh, I think the biggest thing for me is to instill some confidence in, in what we're doing offensively as a group. And to me, that's the most important thing. Is we can get things going, have confidence in ourselves, believe in ourselves, and we'll be successful. And that, that's up to me. And I've, having done that with the whole football team, I, doing it with the offense will be fun. And, and the pressure and all the headaches that you have are cut in half. There were some betting lines that came out um, uh, a week ago from the Golden Nugget that has Utah as underdogs in most of the games. Can that be a motivating factor when your team looks at the looks at the lines and, and they're not really favored? Does that bring a chip, put a chip back on the shoulder? Does that help? Can that help a football team? I don't think it's about the lines or anything like that. I mean, but, I mean it's about respect. And, you know, obviously, whether it's a magazine or whatever it is, people do not think that we're going to be very good. And so... We've got to go out and prove that we are. And I like being in that situation. And you know, our team has a lot of pride. They've instilled a lot of pride here over the years. And, uh, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, it's motivation for all of us. Well, after playing professional basketball for the past decade, former running Ute Chris Burgess has retired. It was announced this week that he will join the Utah basketball program as an undergraduate assistant coach. Mike Grant caught up with Burgess, who was excited to be back on the Hill. 
Chris, you're back. It's just a good, good, good to see you back here. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to be back. Um, Salt Lake is home to me, and Utah is where I played. And I'm so happy to be back, friend. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be able to be on the staff and help in any way I can. What kind of things have they given you? What uh, uh, assignments have they given you so far? So it's, it's it's pretty young right now in terms of how long I've been on the team as a staff member and just working with the guys, getting to know them, building relationships with them, um, understanding my role is probably going to be with the big men, obviously, and Chris Doviak, coach, does a really good job with them. But um, just kind of out on the floor with the summer, um, pick up games, kind of watch them, see what I can help out there. But just a lot of little number, a number of things I can do. And I, and I know as the season progresses and summer gets over with it, my, my, my role will get bigger and bigger. But right now, just trying to get to know them and build relationships. That's fortunate, too, to come back here. Coach Kraskoviak gets you a job right away. Um, talk about your career overseas. And, and, and it, it, while it's probably bittersweet for it to end your playing career, you had a successful career. I did. You know, I played 11 years overseas. I was able to see a lot of countries. I didn't just stick in one spot. I didn't stick in one continent. I uh, traveled as much as I could. Um, this past year, I went into this year about 90% sure it was going to be my last when I went to the Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and the United Emirates. And um, it is bittersweet, but at the same time, um, something like this to fall into um, I, I, is more exciting to me than going back and playing overseas. Um, that, that's how excited I am about this opportunity. You know, we get to go to work and you get to be on the court. You get to help guys get better. You know, I was able to be coached by a lot of great coaches around the country and around the world and it's one of those things where I feel like I can I can learn from a great staff here and try to pay it forward to some of these younger kids on the team any way I can I'm off the floor and on the floor um, and I'm so excited that the fact that I get to come to the Huntsman Center a place I played and a place I um, played and met so many good friends had some great games and, and, and some great atmosphere here and I'm just looking forward to being here and, 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 and bringing anything I can to the table to help this team. What's one great memory you had here in the Huntsman Center? Do you, do you remember one specifically? You know, I think it was BYU. Um, we had a really good game. I want to say it was on ESPN, and, and BYU was really good at the time with um, that three-headed monster of Lede, Whiting, and, and Wesley. And it was, a, it was one of those games that was for the Mountain West title was on the line. And we just we came out on top. And I just remember the fans just being sold out. And that game stick is really familiar to me. Um, because obviously you're rival school and, and a lot went into that game. But that was a really big one, big one to, um, that, that I remember and we still talk about when we get together and kind of reminisce. Tell us about what's going on right here right now. It looks like the youth uh, basketball camps. Um, what's going on? You know, there's about 120 teams from all of the state and I think a couple teams out of state and all levels, freshmen and uh, junior varsity and the varsity level. And we use all the facilities that we can here at the U. Every, 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 uh, College does it, and we, we hold a great one. We think it's a great place to be, and a lot of good teams here, especially from the state. And they're just going against each other and trying to get better and, and gel as a team to prepare for the season and the high school level. Awesome. Chris, thanks a ton Thank you. for uh, uh, talking with us, and, and welcome back. Thank you. I appreciate your time. End okay. the round. Gets a block from Wilson, and what a block it was.